Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XRTERRA. And in this module, we're gonna talk about how you can use Unity's Canvas UI system when you're in virtual reality using the XR Interaction Toolkit. This module assumes that you've at least seen our XR Interaction Toolkit package setup module, and it also talks about the UI system. So I encourage you to watch our module on the UI system and all the buttons and interactions you can use. But assuming that you've seen all of that, let's go ahead and get started in Unity. Here in Unity, I've got a new empty scene. The first thing that I'm going to do is set it up for XR. I'm going to go into my hierarchy plus button and add an XR, XR origin in parentheses VR. I'm actually going to go ahead and reset this to 000, just so I know where that is. And then I'm going to go ahead and maybe make ourselves a plane just so that if we were to ever actually go in VR, we would have some sort of floor. I'm going to go ahead and reset this as well. So now we have ourselves an XR origin. The first thing I'm going to make for UI is going to be a toggle button. We're just going to toggle a cube on and on. It's going to be a relatively simple piece of UI. When I create it using the hierarchy plus button by going to UI and creating a toggle, it gets added to my screen by default. And no matter how I sort of move my XR origin or my camera, it stays in the same place of the screen. Now, the problem with screen space UI in VR is it just doesn't work. And this is because it can be disorienting to lock things onto both eyes. Like the sense of depth gets messed up in general. We just don't use screen space for VR. All of our UI ends up having to be world space. So in our canvas that was created to hold our toggle, we're going to have to go to the inspector and find the canvas component and change the render mode from screen space overlay to world space. Oh, you'll see that it disappeared the toggle from the bottom of our screen. Now this depiction of our canvas is an actually correct depiction of our canvas in the world. This is how this is what we would see in VR. As you can tell, it's incredibly big. So one thing I'll often do is shrink down our canvas to like 0 0.01, 0 0.01. 0 0.01, just so we have a, a, a proper starting scale. So and then I'm going to reset the position to 0, 0, 0. And here is our canvas. I'm going to go ahead and move that up. Maybe I should make that a little bit smaller. Let's give it the width of like 100 and a height of 100. And then let's find our toggle. And we're going to just reset its position. So it's basically just directly in the center of our canvas. So we've got ourselves our canvas. I'm actually going to move it so we can sort of see it on our game window, which we currently can't. I'm going to move it backwards, I think, a little bit and then a little bit down. There we go. We've got ourselves a toggle that's basically floating in the air in front of us. I also realized that we never deleted our main camera, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that to avoid any extra errors. In order to test out our rays, I'm going to actually be using the XR device simulator. This is something that I recommend you check out our video on if you don't know what the XR device simulator is, but it's basically going to allow me to use XR using my mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to go into my project window under samples, XR interaction toolkit version number, XR device simulator. I'm going to drag this prefab into my hierarchy. And now when I hit play, I should be able to use my controllers and kind of move them around. But when I try and point them at my toggle button, I'm not going to be able to select them. That is because our event system is currently set up to detect mouse clicks. So if I actually select the event system that was automatically generated when I added my toggle button, you'll see that it comes with the standalone input module. This standalone input module is specifically designed for mouse clicks. And not only that, it's designed for the old input system, which we generally don't use in combination with the external interaction toolkit. So yes, I can replace this with the input system UI input module, but even this component is dependent on having a mouse to click on things. We actually don't have that. What we have is XR rays. So instead of the input system UI input module, I'm just going to remove this component entirely and instead add the XR UI input module. The XR UI input module is part of the XR interaction toolkit, and it's what we use in combination with an event system to actually be able to select and interact with UI elements in the Canvas system. This is not the only thing that we need, however. In order for our canvas to actually understand where our rays are and whether our rays are pointing at this canvas, it needs an additional component. Right now we have a graphic raycaster, but what we need to add is the tracked device graphic raycaster. When you add the tracked device graphic raycaster component onto a canvas, all of those canvas elements become accessible using the XR rays. So now when I hit play, I will be able to use my controllers 
to point at our toggle button. And when I rotate over them, you'll see that they turn white. And I can actually use the left click to simulate a trigger button and I can interact with it as if I was pressing the trigger button, although using the XR device simulator, that's just a click. And I can actually toggle and untoggle this button. So just to prove that this is working, let's create ourselves a cube that we're going to toggle off and on. I'm going to go ahead and reset its position and move it forward. So this cube, we're going to toggle off and on. And I'm going to set that up by going to my toggle button and on value change. I'm going to add a new callback. I'm going to drag a reference to the cube. And then using the function dropdown, I'm going to find the mesh render enabled bool. So this property will basically allow me to check and uncheck the mesh render to make this cube disappear. The cube will still exist, but it won't be visible. So I'll hit play and I'll use my controllers to select this toggle button. And it will turn the cube off and then turn it back on, off, on, off, on. So with this will basically work with all other UI elements that you have in the Canvas system. When we take a look, yeah, the slider will work. You can select the slider with your arrays. I don't know, the input field might not necessarily work because there's not really a way to type in VR, but all of the other stuff that you want to interact with will usually be interactable in VR. As a summary, in order to get XR to work with your UI system, you need two things. The event system has to use the XR UI input module, and the canvas that contains all your elements has to have a track device graphic raycaster. That's how you set up the XR Interaction Toolkit to work with the canvas system. That's it for this module, and I hope to see you in the next module.